Hey friends, it is Kate here. Thank you so much for jumping on my channel and joining me for a class today. I have got a 30 minute Pilates yoga fusion class just for you. Now this one is gonna kinda hit the whole body so I don't feel like there's much that needs to be said. Roll out your mat and let's get started. Let's begin lying on our back, on our mat. And just let yourself arrive. If you wanna close your eyes, go ahead. If it feels better to keep them open, that's great too. Hands could rest one on your heart, one on your stomach, off to the side, palms up to the sky. Just take a moment, get nice and situated. And fill your lungs with your next breath in, big inhale and just let them deflate as you exhale. Again, big, deep, cooling breath in, and a warm sigh out. One more time. Let it go. Flutter your eyes open if they're closed. Imprint the spine, remember that means to lightly press down the small of the back into the mat, getting rid of that space between your mat and that little natural curve. We're gonna press a little deeper into your left foot, keeping that left side of the body so still, so stable. And on your next exhale, just lift your right knee up. Now, I am not so concerned with you lifting the heel up whatsoever. I'm more thinking of you just pulling the knee kind of up towards your shoulder. Now, I could pull mine up much higher than this, but my hips go out of alignment when I do so. So I'm just lifting it up only so high as um, nothing else moving in my body. And then from here, I want you to do a couple of little circles of that knee. Think of the knee kind of pointing and reaching around. As you do those circles, do you notice if your left leg is moving at all? We want it to remain still. You can go ahead and pause and then circle in the other direction. We're just giving a little love, a little attention to those hips. Sometimes it's nice to get some lovely little circular movement in that ball and socket joint up there. Slow it down. Go ahead now, hug that knee in. And if you feel like your shoulders are caving in, you can just actively think about pulling it in. But if you have the range of motion, the ability to keep the shoulders connected to the back of the mat, then you can give a light extra little squeeze, a little hug. And maybe you even want to assist in some of those circles. That can feel really nice. Both directions can be good. And then from here, I just want you to send that leg straight up to the sky. Go ahead, flex the foot, and really actively think of pulling the toes towards your face. And then let's do some circles in our ankle right here, trying to keep that leg steady and still. You could even bring your hands to your hips if you're in the mood. Circle your ankle in the other direction. Come on back to center again, actively flex, heel up, toes down, maybe clasp your hands behind your leg. Maybe you wanna give it a little stretch. This is not the deepest stretch you've ever, ever done. In fact, keep it gentle and steady and just notice where in your body you're feeling any tension, any tightness, and then slowly relax that leg down. Stamp into the right foot and use your next exhale to lift the left knee up. No hands off to the side, onto your hips, perfectly fine. But let's do those gentle circling motions with our left knee now. Going in one direction a couple of times and then reversing, taking it in the opposite direction at your own pace. No hurry, no rush whatsoever slow it down and then just as we did on the other side if you want to clasp your hands around and give your leg a little extra hug trying as much as you can with all your might to keep all of that space along your left side we don't want to collapse onto that other side and again maybe you want to assist in some circles there I tell you, any kind of work I do on my hips, I could usually end up spending a whole 45 minutes just circling around here, giving my hips love. And then 
send your foot up to the sky as much as we can. I do want you to actively extend the leg up. If it's a little lower, if there's a bend there, that's perfectly fine, but do keep the imprinted spine, keep those ribs together, and let's circle our ankle around. There is no reason we can't think about all those good muscles that help to hold us up. Reverse the circle in your foot. And then like we did on the other side, actively flex, reach that heel up. You know, the minute that I actively flex my foot, I instinctively turn on my hamstring a little bit more. Usually speaking, when I point my toe, I tend to grip through the front of my quad. You might notice that's the case for you, or maybe you need to do the opposite. There's no one perfect, um, you know, way to practice our Pilates. It's listening to your body. And then again, if you want to clasp the hand behind, give yourself a little extra stretch, nothing too big, too crazy. Just whatever feels good right now. And then eventually bring both feet onto the mat. Let's pull both knees in and then circle the knees out and away from each other. Three, two, one in one direction. Go the opposite. Three, two, one. And now from here, take your feet to a little tabletop. Notice, did you just let your low back pull away from the mat? If so, you could always set one foot on the ground to give yourself a little more stability, or maybe even pull your knees in a little bit higher towards your chest if it's just too much to have them right over the hips. But if you could, I want you to keep actively flexing the feet so we can try to turn on those hamstrings, and then take your hands to the tops of your thighs, press your hands into your thighs, and pull those shoulders down the back, belly button up and in. Now I want you to almost imagine jamming your knee up into your hand. We've got some isometric movement going on there. Um, isometric engagement, I mean, we're not moving. You're turning on those muscles and stopping. And then from here, simply take a great big inhale. And then I want you to exhale, tone that belly so much and really press into your hands without letting your hands come closer to you at all. Five times I want you to inhale, straighten your right leg, exhale, pull it in, press into your hand. Inhale, straighten, exhale, pull it in. <sighs> inhale, straighten, exhale, pull it in. <sighs> Two more, straighten, pull it in. <sighs> Last one, straighten, pull it in, hold. Same thing left side for five, <sighs> four, <sighs> three, <sighs> two, <sighs> last one both legs now can you do it reach it out for five four three two last one from here reach your fingertips up keep that feeling of pressing your legs in towards you actively flexing your feet take a full breath fold from the sternum curl yourself up and away it's like someone just chopped you right at that sternum and you had to lift yourself up and over reach your fingertips nice and far away extend the right leg out for five four three two last one left leg for five four keep lifting up Keep reaching those fingers long and away. Last one, both legs. Five, four, three, two, last one. Both legs in, seal them together. Reach a little bit more, imprint that spine, tone that belly, take a great big breath. Bring your hands behind your thighs. And now I want you to press through your hands and straighten the thighs until we could bring ourselves all the way up to a great big boat or teaser or navasana, whatever you wanna call it. And then bend the knees. Ideally, we want our shins level with the ground, but you know what? If you need to set a foot down to stabilize, that's okay. Keep hugging the backs of your thighs, rolling your shoulders, broadening the chest, toning the belly. If you fall down or wobble or wiggle or do anything here, that's okay. Okay, we're not statues. You're never gonna be completely still. Take a big deep inhale, great big breath out. Another full, big inhale, big sigh out. Are you experiencing any tension through the front of our hip or psoas? That happens to some of us. It's not unusual. If so, for me, the more I tone my belly and the more I think about lifting up out of my sitting bones, the less likely that happens. 
could we either stay here or release the hands and then five times i just want us to drop our heels down exhale lift <sighs> bend at the knees exhale lift <sighs> three more bend exhale lift <sighs> two bend exhale lift <sighs> Last one, lift, hold. And then could we straighten our legs? Exhale, pull it in. <sighs> Inhale, straighten our legs. Exhale, pull it in. <sighs> Three more. <sighs> Two. <sighs> Last one. <sighs> Take an easy seat. Bring the hands to the tops of the thighs. Roll your shoulders back. Sit up tall and straight. Low belly pulls up and in. Inhale, reach your hands up high. Exhale, press your right hand down behind your hip. Lift the left hand up, and then let's take a great big beautiful side stretch over. Now, rather than thinking about reaching towards the floor, instead I actually want you to think about reaching towards that wall that's opposite of your left hand. Imagine if I just came up and lightly set my hand on the top of your left thigh, just encouraging it to reach towards the ground. Would you find a bigger stretch? Could you find more space along that lateral left side? Take a breath. And then rather than coming up, I just want you to forward fold. So go ahead and roll yourself forward. Push yourself up, and we'll do the same thing to the other side. Flip those hands up, find a big deep stretch. Take your left hand down, right hand up, and then we're going to reach towards our opposite wall. In fact, I can actually touch my opposite wall just from where I happen to be. If you are like me, you could even use that as a little prop, help to deepen that stretch if you want to. But again, like we did on the first side, imagine that I came and lightly pressed my hand onto the top of your right thigh, helping you to open up that la right lateral side. Take a breath. Exhale, go ahead and curl yourself forward and roll yourself up. From here, we're going to step into our first downward dog of class. And remember, we have lots of options. If downward dog is too much to, for us today, but we're okay with a light inversion like this, you could always drop down to your elbows in more of a dolphin pose. I do that a lot in my own practice when I'm in a yoga class. Sometimes it's just too much on my wrist. You could, of course, walk over to a wall and do more of a little L stretch at a wall, and you'll experience the same lovely stretch through the back of the body. Now from here, I want you to walk your feet a little bit wider than your mat. Just wide enough to what feels good for you. And then I want you to deeply bend your left knee, straightening your right. You might be able to even set your right heel down while you do that. Your hips will shift over to the left, but I still want you to think about keeping your lateral body long. Shoulders down, neck long, take a big inhale. Exhale, return to center, straighten both legs. Now deeply bend your right, shift the hips over to the right, find that length through your side body. Take a big deep inhale, great big breath out, and then slowly return. Lift the hips up higher, almost imagine now that I'm pulling your hips away from your body so you can find that big deep stretch, and then walk your feet um, back in line with your hips. Take a big deep inhale and wave forward. Find a lovely big plank pose. If that's too much, set a knee down if you need to. Exhale, return to your dog. Inhale, wave forward, find your plank pose. Exhale, return to your dog. Last one, way forward, find your plank pose. From here, let's set both knees down. Realign the spine, low belly up and in, and then lower all the way down onto your stomach. Untuck the toes, press the tops of the feet into the mat, and hug your elbows in towards your sides. Think of cinching the waist here and drawing the ribs a little closer together. If I was to come up to you and pull your ears forward, would there be more length in the back of your neck? On your next inhale, roll the shoulders, lift the heart and chest, find a little cobra. Exhale, keep pulling those elbows in, low belly as well as you come on down. Inhale, roll, lift on up. Exhale, tone the stomach, gently roll down. Can you press deeper into your pubic bone as you lift up? Exhale, soften all the way down. Use your hands as a little pillow for your forehead, bend your knees, and windshield wiper it side to side. No rush, no hurry. 
tuck the toes, turn on the legs so much your knees lift away from the mat. Again, hug your elbows in towards your side. Could we press up into a plank pose, my friend? I think that you can. I know you are so strong. Tone that tummy, lengthen through your low back. Take a big inhale. Exhale, press so hard you fly up into your plank. Take another breath. Send yourself back into your dog. Give yourself a moment or two here, and eventually I want us to step our right foot forward between our hands. Now if you need a little scooch, you need to use your hand to scooch that leg up there, that's okay. In a low lunge, oftentimes I kind of sway myself back and forth or even side to side. Um, different instructors have different things that they feel very strongly about. Um, I am not one of those instructors that says you have to stay and hold the pose exactly um, where you step the first time. I encourage you to kind of explore and see what feels good in your body. Um, but from here, think about the front of your left hip and it's almost like you're trying to press the front of the left, left hip down to the mat so we can get a great big stretch. Imagine I just came up and grabbed hold of your left ankle and tried to encourage that left heel to press down into the ground behind you. Press deeply into the floor with your left hand. Bring your right hand to the top of your right thigh and then roll the shoulder look over that shoulder this may be enough feel free to stay or maybe extend that hand up to the sky it's almost like your left hand is suction cup to the floor and you are trying with all your might to reach those fingertips up inhale swoop that hand up in line with your ear exhale bring it back over your shoulder <sighs> inhale swoop it up exhale bring it back <sighs> Last one, swoop it up, bring it back, set it on the ground. Step back to your downward facing dog, swivel those hips, feel free to move, to wiggle, do whatever you need to. And then when you're ready, step the opposite foot forward. Once we arrive in our little low lunge to our other side, we're thinking about the front of our right hip now. I'm trying to flatten it out. By that I mean a lot of times we kind of um, tip our pelvis forward when we feel like we're trying to stretch as hard as we can, but we're in fact making the stretch um, smaller in our body by doing that, by kind of curling up your joints. Instead, if you can, think about opening up that space right there, reaching your heel back and broadening your shoulders you will experience a bigger stretch, even if maybe your leg's a little closer in. Um, but yeah, you just need to do what feels good for you. Take a big breath, big sigh out. When you're ready, right hand on the ground, left hand on top of the left thigh, and then roll that shoulder, look up and over. Again, we can feel free to stay right here or maybe lift the left hand up. Feel free to hold here or like we did on the other side, three times, grow long, reach that hand up, over. Exhale, bring it back. <sighs> Inhale, reach it up and over. Exhale, bring it back. <sighs> Last time, up and over. Exhale, bring it back. Set the hand on the floor. Return to your downward facing dog. No hurry, no rush whatsoever. Shine your sitting bones up to the sky. Maybe even give your tushy a little wiggle. Look to the top of your mat and travel forward however you want to get there. Let's have feet about hip distance apart and lengthen through the back of your sitting bones. If you wanna bend the knees a little bit and shine your sitting bones up to the sky a little bit more, that's great. If you can straighten and do the same thing, that's wonderful too. Bring the hands to the tops of your shins or your thighs, whatever works better. Press away just like we did on our back earlier. Pull your belly button in, broaden your chest, reach your hip bones towards the wall behind you. Exhale, relax. <sighs> Inhale, half lift. Exhale, relax. <sighs> Last one, half lift and hold, low belly up and in, take a breath. From here, bend your knees. Now bring your hands to the tops of your thighs if they aren't already, roll the shoulders back, press yourself up into funny little chair pose. Now usually our feet are together in chair pose, but we've got about hip distance here and that's on purpose. Bring one hand to your stomach and one hand to your back. That's to give you a tactile cue. cue. Are you letting everything dump forward? That's an easy spot to do. Belly button in, low back, long and straight. 
lift those hands up nice and high. Sit deeper into that chair. I want you to imagine that you've got um, a ball or a yoga block between your thighs and you are trying to squeeze it. Now that does not mean we wanna knock our knees together by any means. It's just that feeling of, in fact, if you wanna take your hands between your thighs and give them a little squeeze like we did that press away earlier, that's the feeling there. We wanna turn on all the muscles we can. Sit down a little deeper. Flip your palms so they're facing towards the ground. Take a big inhale. Now as you exhale, I want you to cactus the arms out to the side. Inhale, straighten, reach them out and away. Exhale, cactus them off to the side. We'll keep doing that same little motion. And as you do this, I could let my elbows droop and kind of let my fingers go back and forth and I wouldn't get much out of this. Instead, I want you to imagine that there's a wall behind you and you're trying to kind of scrape your arms up against the wall as you go back and forth. Two more, down, right back up, down. Now up, hold, take a breath. Sit deeper, take one more big inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Let that head be heavy. Notice in this forward fold, does it feel like you can go a little deeper now? Find all that length there. Hands to shins, inhale, half lift. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, let it go. Last one, half lift again, stay. Low belly in, and then deeply bend the knees if you haven't already. Hands to the tops of the shin, I'm um, sorry, the tops of the thighs, and press yourself back up to your chair. Low belly in. If you wanna use your hand on your stomach and back again, that's wonderful. Take those hands up. And now this time, again, flip and find that cactus. Now, I want you to keep those elbows pressing back the entire time, but shift the weight into your right foot. From here, could we lift up our left heel and step our left foot back into a great big lunge? Holding here, belly button in, top of the head high. Almost think about trying to pull your mat towards, um, your feet towards one another with the mat. Um, that's a kind of activation through our inner thighs that we wanna have going for us here. Same thing that we did before. I want you to slide your hands up, up, up. Exhale, cactus, bring them down, belly button up and in as you do. Inhale, you're kind of dragging them across that imaginary wall that's behind us. Exhale, pull them back. Inhale, lift them up. Exhale, pull them back, stay low belly in, flatten out through the front of that left hip, big breath here. And I want you to exhale and twist to the right. Now your twist might be a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller than mine, that's okay. Maybe unfold your hands, reaching your wings far away. Wiggle out those fingers if you need to. Take a big breath here. Big sigh out. Bend the elbows again, slowly return. Reach them up, take a breath. And now I want you to hop yourself into your forward fold with your legs about hip distance apart still. Notice if your forward fold has changed at all. Hands to shins or thighs, inhale, half lift. Exhale, let it go. Bend the knees, hands to the tops of the thighs. Push yourself up, belly button in, sit a little deeper, reach those hands up, flip the palms, cactus. Now the weight is in our left foot. Shift it on over, but don't um, lose that connection through your low belly. Keep everything nice and long as you can. Step the right foot back. Find your lovely lunge, low belly in, shoulders broad. Reach your right heel towards the ground. And then inhale up, exhale cactus. <sighs> inhale up, exhale cactus. <sighs> One more up, exhale cactus, hold. Kiss those shoulder blades in, draw the ribs towards one another. Scoop the belly, cinch the waist. Take a big inhale, exhale a little twist to the left. <sighs> Inhale, pull yourself back. Exhale, little twist left. Inhale, pull yourself back. Last one, little twist left. Unfan the hands if you want to reach them further away. Maybe even look towards your back left hand. No hurry, no rush. Unravel, bring yourself back, and then hop into that forward fold. Whether you do that gracefully or not, that is a-okay with me. 
take one more big inhale here. Great big sigh out. Bend the knees so much that we come all the way down to a seat. Hands behind the thighs. Or take them off in front of you, whatever you want to. Scoop the belly, curl, and slowly roll yourself down. Can we roll down for five, four, three, two, one? Relax. We're back on our mat just as we started, and I want us to focus on a couple of those same things that we did when we began class. Hands down by our sides, shoulders open broad, stamp into your left foot, lift your right knee. And let's do a couple more of those circles. And there's no right or wrong answer. Maybe you don't notice anything different the second time we do this little action here. Reverse those circles if you haven't. Um, but I just want you to notice in your own body. Sometimes once we've gotten a little movement, we have some more knowledge. We'll know what we need the next time we're here. Slow that down, reach your foot up, and then let's do a couple more of those little ankle circles. And then actively flex the foot. Maybe once more, clasp the hands behind your leg. And do you notice is it a little easier? Do you have way more range of motion, less range of motion? What's calling to you? Do you want to hold right there? Do you want to do some circles in the leg with it long? Again, no right or wrong, just giving ourselves time to notice any changes in our body. Let it go, cross it over. Let's find a little figure four. We know we never press deeply on that knee, we never shove on that knee since it's so precious and delicate to us, but we can encourage that leg to open up by pressing on the middle of the thigh, hoping, helping it to open up, open out, unravel. Same thing to the other side, stamp down into the right foot, lift the left, a couple of circles, reverse the other way, send the leg up, and then again, if we want to do some ankle circles here. Hands behind the thigh. If you want to give yourself a little extra stretch, a little extra love, maybe close your eyes and just enjoy this feeling of being on your back, giving your body permission to stretch as deeply or shallow as you so choose. Again, you can give your legs some circles here with it long. These are not our crazy tiny circles and Pilates. I'm not so concerned if your hips move a little bit. This is more about self-care. Pull your knees once more into your chest. Press the knees out and away from one another. Stir them in the other direction. And roll yourself up to a seat. As always, give yourself a lovely little pat on the back. Say thank you for doing something just for you. I certainly hope you enjoyed our class and I can't wait to see you again.